Withdrawal is the last thing anyone should have to go through. Help change the story of addiction. Best two out of three. Share your story of recovery with the partnership at drugfree.org. Something's not right. My first symptoms were... Constant tingling in my toes. My legs, sometimes I'll go numb. I had double vision. They said you have multiple sclerosis. Well, the beginning is the hardest time. Kind of had to get a grasp on reality. I had to adapt and change very rapidly. I had to learn how to drive with my hands. Yeah, that was interesting. I was a dancer. I don't see walking the way I walk any different than doing a dance. It just looks different. It's a different dance. You see me have an off day, it doesn't take away from who I am. A symptom may cause you not to be able to do that anymore. And at one point, I wasn't able to do any of those. But I would exercise every day. Since I've been cycling, it's definitely helped my walking. To make a lot of changes in my life and just adapt to it. I'm going to acknowledge its presence. I'm not going to discount it. But at the same time, I'm going to try my best to not let it stop me. It's a fantastic opportunity to be working together with a common goal of carrying MS. And sharing is the key. Sixty-five yards of offense for Texas A&M. As we take a look at our Coors Light freeze cam, we got to freeze Johnny. And I mean, just the lower body strength, the ability to continually get out, elude the first defender. I mean, it's second to none. Now, I'm not really sure where they teach that throwing technique from, but <laughs> I mean, he really finishes runs for a guy that doesn't look that sturdy, doesn't look like he has a, a, a low center of gravity to him. He does a good job of running through arm tackles. And AM is going to keep the pressure on. And SMU says they have the football. We're going to wait and see what the officials say. And it's saying it's a dead ball. Pickup of eight on the play. And the officials want to talk about it. Straight ahead, up over the 30, up to the 31 yard line. Was it or was it not a fumble? I think it went out of bounds. And based on where they spotted yeah. the ball, they called it a fumble, but they said that the SME defender recovered out of bounds. Gowers looking, going deep, pass is incomplete. Mass intended for Askew. What am I going to say, Ron? <laughs> well, <laughs> he overthrew him again. Two ways. We guarantee the deep ball is incomplete. You overthrow it, throw it out of bounds. Every quarterback coach that had that in his yeah. meeting room on the wall is a reminder every time the quarterbacks come in there. And if you approach deep balls with that mindset, you'll complete a whole lot more of them. Now, this is Texas A&M's fifth punt. And a fair catch is being called for at the 26-yard line. Blake Poston comes up with it. We've got a timeout. Devotion. 
pass it on. More than 50 million people in America face hunger, yet 70 billion pounds of excess food goes unused in the U.S. every year. There has to be a better way. Join the Fox Sports team as we support Feeding America, a nationwide network of food banks helping provide meals for people who need it. Go to feedingamerica.org slash Fox Sports to learn how you can help solve hunger in your community. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back to Dallas, Texas, on the campus of SMU, where Texas A&M has come in. They brought a lot of fans, and they put a lot of points on since a scoreless first quarter. And the core has made their way up here. SMU's got it with six minutes and 55 seconds left. First and 10 ball on the 27-yard line. Gilbert looking, throwing. Garrett Gilbert's Let's check in with Desmond Purnell. Ron, Johnny Manziel is going to grab a lot of headphones, uh, headlines today after today's game. But the key to today's game has been the Texas A&M defense. They've been in beast mode all day. They have yet to allow a touchdown. You guys know how hard it is to keep a June Jones offense out of the end zone. They've been very aggressive, very physical. They've applied a lot of pressure to, to uh, Gilbert and that entire SMU offense. No doubt the game ball should go to the Aggies defense. They've played extremely well. Well, and kudos to Mark Snyder, their defensive coordinator. Desmond, There's Joseph. Desmond hating on the quarterback, huh? <laughs> the quarterback accounts for six total touchdowns, and Desmond says he doesn't deserve a game ball. Now let's look at Demontre Moore and see what he's done today. Bit disruptive in every phase. That's relentless, has a high motor, never stops. First year defensive end, played outside linebacker. Doing his yeah. here in Texas a &M, but really has embraced the transition and is excelling. SMU only one of 15 on third down. They need a couple here. And they get it. Zach Lyon over the 50 in Texas A&M territory all the way down to the 42-yard line. And that run, I think, puts Zach, Zach Lyon over 100 yards rushing yes, for does. the day, which will be his 17th career 100-yard game rushing performance. 22 on the pickup. And the young man just keeps getting on different pages in the back of the media yeah. guy, Ron. <laughs> he does that. He's got 103 yards now, Zach Line does. Three games played, two 100-yard rushing performances. More importantly for SMU, it's a first down. Gilbert looks left, locks onto his receiver, incomplete. Nice job by Tony Hurd. Coaches were right about Hurd. Yeah, he's got a lot of PT today. He's, he's made the most of his opportunity. You know, Stephen Campbell, along with Christian Michael, both suspended right. for today's game. Stephen's normally the starting safety, so that you know, gives Tony Hurd some more snaps. And you can see why Mark Snyder is enthusiastic mm -hmm. about getting the opportunity to utilize him. Now well, they've corrected a lot of the mistakes they made in that Florida game. Okay. Darius Johnson stood up as he gets down to the 37-yard line. Pick up a six on the play. I like Devontae Harris. Yeah. True freshman cornerback. He plays with a lot of confidence. You know, a lot of times you get young guys like that. Cornerback's a lonely position sometimes. It is. You know, but he plays with confidence. And, and you see the athleticism. You see the ability. You know, he has that mindset that, you know what, I can handle this. This isn't too big for me. I mean, Kevin Sumlin has to be excited about some of these young guys in here. A lot of ability, a lot of potential. Zach line straight up ahead. But, you know, when you First talk to Mark Snyder and you say, hey, you know, you've got a, a lot of redshirt freshmen or freshmen playing. you got a freshman starter, a defensive end, and cornerback. Are you nervous? He goes, yeah, I'm nervous. <laughs> he, said, he said, but in three years, I'm going to be glad we did it. And uh, Mark Snyder, a very aggressive defensive coordinator, he and Kevin Sumlin go back to their days when they both coached with Glenn Mason at Minnesota. 
And the thing I like about the Aggie, the Aggie youth, Ron, is that they have upperclassmen, they have right. seniors that can actually play. That, that's a good point. You know, Demontre Moore is a junior, Sean Porter is a senior, Jonathan Stewart's a senior. Gilbert looking. And he is going to be thrown down back at the 34-yard line. It'll be a loss of three on the play. And, Ron, that's important. Not, that, not just that you have experience, but that you have upperclassmen who are actually good right. football players. Four sacks today for this Aggie defense. They had eight versus Florida last week. Setting the bar really high in these first two oh. games. <laughs> 51 will be obliterated what they got last year. And they led FBS yeah. schools with 51 sacks. Actually, Mark Snyder, who was at USF, yeah. was only two sacks behind that Aggie defense with 49 with the Bulls. Gilbert on the quick slant pattern. Gilbert's pass goes incomplete. And it is incomplete. Darius Joseph. Darius Joseph, the intended receiver, almost got his head taken off. Redshirt freshman out of Abilene, Texas. Third down Mustangs call it 13 from the 34-yard line. And it'll be third and 13 for the Mustangs. Only three of 17 on third down today. <laughs> Gilbert has to throw it into the dirt again, and a penalty flag comes in. And I think they're going to call holding. Brian Collins, the right tackle, as soon as they threw the flag, he kind of looked up and went, got me. <laughs> and it's hard to get a holding call on a screen pass. And you're not really supposed to block them on the screen, Ron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah really. Holding. holding. Number 67. Number 67. Penalty, Penalty declined. declined. Fourth down. And it was Brian Collins. But I will say this, and Desmond Purnell mentioned it. I mean, you do you have to be happy if you're an Aggie fan with this yes. defense, not just this week, but last week as well. I mean, holding that Florida team to 20 points, you know, mm -hmm. really playing stout defense. I know they end up losing, but I mean, eight sacks uh, last week against Florida. I mean, a lot of things to build on from how they played early in the season. Fourth down for the Mustangs. Zach Lyons straight ahead. Won't even get close. Fourth and 13 draw. I want to take a moment now to tell you a little bit about what uh, you can do to help a gentleman that we saw get injured last week. Devin Walker, the football player from Tulane. June Jones and his organization has done their part. The College Football Assistance Fund, or the CFAF, they announced a grant of $10,000 to the Devin Walker Fund to help defray the medical costs and provide assistance. Of course, June's part of this great foundation. It's a nonprofit organization. They dedicated themselves to support any athlete that has sustained serious injury through college football. And June was one of the first to make sure he got this check, and they did it very early. You saw the website on your screen, Trey Williams. But you can also go to www.tulane.edu slash Devin Walker for any assistance. And Great talking to June about it and how much his organization cares. And you can also go to his or organization again. It's cfafund.org if you'd like to donate. And I've got to say this about June Jones, Ron. I've been around a lot of coaches, you know, we've played for, have relationships with. And, you know, he should really just be commended on the impact he's had, not only the young men that have been under yeah. his guidance, but in the community and in college football Absolutely. overall. I mean, to spearhead something like that, to have it in place so that when tragic things happen, if there is something already set up that's available to help, I mean, just his foresight, like the fact that he's always thinking that's about right. others, I think says a lot about, you know, who, jo who June Jones is. You know, you talk to the players, and they said one thing about Coach Jones is he cares. He has an organization here that works with the Dallas City School System that does great work. And by the way, we will have Tulane and Ole Miss next Saturday, and... I'll be spending some time with some of the Tulane players this week, and we'll have more on that on our game next week. We're down doing some interviews. I have been in New Orleans in a while. I can't wait to get back. And a quick update, Devin Walker. Uh, he's still stable. He actually started some therapy as Matt Jokel's checked into the lineup. The sophomore out of Arlington, Texas, whose brother's the starting left tackle, actually twin brothers. 
You don't hear twins left tackle and quarterback very often. This slanted pass is complete, and that'll be close to the first down. Down to about the 45-yard line, and it will be a first down. You know, my question would be is if Luke Joker leaves early and goes to the NFL, and I'm his twin brother, and I'm still at A&M, is it permissible for him to buy me things? <laughs> <laughs> Straight ahead running by Dolzal, the freshman. Because he was my brother before he became yeah, exactly. Alone, you know? I'm with you on that. <laughs> Bryce goes all out of Austin, Texas, Austin Westlake, and there's his brother getting a little smile. Brother getting a little PT. And then getting tripped up as he gets close to the 30-yard line. Mark him down at the 31. Final minute and a half of the ball game. They, they do look alike, don't they? Except uh, let's see, Luke is 310 and his brother is 234. I think Luke might be faster, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they love hearing That's that. That's got to be awesome as a mom and dad to have oh my both the kids playing in the SEC and yeah. getting a chance to see both of them perform today. It's one of the beautiful things about college sports. That's second down, no gain. And those experiences I and mean, those memories, you know, they last forever. Absolutely. SMU, as we mentioned, has a week off. Then they host TCU. Texas A&M, meanwhile, they will host South Carolina State next Saturday. And of course, will be Ole Miss Tulane also next Saturday. Also, not much running room on third down and nine. I'm getting hungry already, Ron. There you go. <laughs> That's your stomping some ground. Malaya, some shrimp etouffee. I think I'm going to call the good people up in Lafayette. Have them bring some boudin sausage for us, Ron. There you go. Well, that's going to be the final play of the game. Kevin Sumlin gets his first win as head coach of Texas A&M, and he does it on the road. His team has 605 yards of total offense, 380 through the air. Johnny Manziel was the, one of the stars on the offensive side. What a performance by his redshirt freshman quarterback. Good confidence builder, though, for A&M, Sean, after losing to Florida. Yeah, I was worried that they may have an emotional letdown. I mean, so much was put into that season opener. You know, it's supposed to be La Tech, and then the hurricane postponed it. And then you open with Florida, and you end up losing that game late. You know, this could have very easily been a, a letdown game for them, but they showed a lot of poise and, and just a heck of a ball game by this Aggie ball club. Well, it was a tough day for the Mustangs of SMU. Good day for the Aggies of A&M, the final again, 48-3. Coming up next, it's North Texas from the Sun Belt Conference taking on number 15, Kansas State, from the Big 12. Check your local listings. The final again, A&M 48, SMU 3. For Sean King and Desmond Purnell, I'm Rob Thulin. You've been watching Fox College Football on Fox Sports Network. The following is a presentation of Fox Sports. Welcome to Coors Light Fox College Football. Let's go. 18 on three. One, two, three. 18. It has been an emotional time for Tulane since the serious injury to teammate Devin Walker two weeks ago. But today, players and fans on.